Hey, React Live. Uh, my name is Eric Bouchard. I'm a developer advocate at Couchbase. And today we are going to talk about from context API to recoil JS, how and why to use recoil for context and cross component state in your React applications. Now, um, I have some resources and some slides next that you can screenshot if you like, um, information about where to find me. Um, I have a blog, reactstateofmind.com. Um, I have a Twitter account, a uh, Twitch account, which you can watch me streaming, and also uh, I have a LinkedIn. So feel free to connect with me, DM me. My DMs are always open. If you want to talk about the talk or any of the resources, uh, I'm available. The resources for this talk we just talked about is um, at bit.ly slash react recoil. So you can screenshot this if you want to save that. Um, or just go ahead and type it in now and go check it out while we're doing the uh, demo. But with that, we're going to go ahead and get to our application that we're uh, demoing today. So one of the reasons why you might want to use recoil purely for a ergonomical benefit would be to um, manage global state. Now, the only real advantage you're going to be using for switching over uh, an application like this one where we're tracking the theme, you know, like literally a string that says light or dark, um, and then also this side navigation, um, right? These are just two pieces of state, but in an application you might have 10 or 20 of those things. So um, where we would normally kind of track that, uh, or where I track it at least, is inside of a context API component uh, and an app provider. So you can see that here we have this app provider um, we are setting up some React state here, very basic stuff. We are passing in kind of a default object here in which we're kind of setting um, the defaults for each of the pieces of uh, state that we want to track. And we also have to set up um, a field for toggle side nav and change theme. And these equate to basically a function that will allow us to change our state. We have a use effect in here so that whenever you change the theme, we can actually go and change that in local storage. And we also are using another hook called use media predicate that comes from the react media hook library, which is a great library, allows us to basically pass in a media query predicate and then based off of whether this is true or false, do something with it. So we're saving either the string dark to preferred theme or light to preferred theme based on whether this equates to true or false. Okay. So let's really quickly go look at how our application is set up. We have an app.js where we have an app provider that wraps around our entire application. If we go into the frame component, we can see that this is kind of where we have um, the frame of the application uh, and all of the routing. And um, we have some basic suspense stuff going on there. We're lazy loading some uh, components. And that's going to be important in a minute when I talk to you about uh, recoil. Now, we're using, uh, on this page right now, we're just, uh, getting app context so that we can have access to that theme. Um, and, and basically, we have this div that wraps around our entire application, and we're setting um, a class that either, either says light or dark, and then the rest of our application is responding to that when it changes and either loading the light or the dark theme. It's a pretty simple uh, way to do uh, a switch between light and dark theme. Um, yeah, so we have a foot. .js, a menu.js, and a side nav.js that also use this context to either read the state or to set the state. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get away from using this app context file and we're going to set up an app atoms.js. Now, in recoil, atoms are the individual pieces of state. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would set those up real quick. Remember, in our app context, we had a nav open and a theme. Um, piece of state, and we have those here. I have renamed them with recoil at the end just to make it, uh, make it different from the other uh, names while, I was, uh, while I'm switching over so I don't have any conflicts in case I forget to remove something, whatever. Um, it just helps me remember which one is which. But an atom, you have a key, which is a unique value, and you have a default. Like, what will this atom's default value be? So for nav open, we are uh, giving it a default value of false, and for theme, we are giving it a default value of nothing. Um, now, this is interesting here. We'll get to selectors in a moment. Um, in our app context, we are 
inside of a provider component, an app provider component, we have the ability to use hooks to determine kind of how we set the, um, the initial state for theme. We have uh, another hook here, use effect, that whenever theme changes, that we go and then do something like set local storage uh, to either light or dark so that if they close out the browser and come back later, we can remember what theme they were on. Great, right? Well, when you set up your atoms with recoil, you do an import atom, then you set up the individual atom with this, uh, this function right here. And, um, and, and yeah, there's, there's no way, there's nowhere to put those use effects. There's nowhere to kind of do that extra work. So what I've done is I've extract all of that logic out into a basically um, a React hook. And it looks probably very familiar here. We just saw this on the uh, app context page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the frame.js page. I'm, I'm going to call it from there. Also, we're getting our first look at how to use recoil state from another component or hook, right? So if you see here, in order to use um, the theme uh, recoil atom that we already set up, what we need to do is first import it, right? Because we've exported it uh, from here. Export const theme recoil. Uh, and then we are basically setting it up just like a regular hook, just like a regular use state, right? So um, this is another cool thing is that when you lift up state and, and use recoil, you basically just change your use state to a use recoil state. It's super easy. All right, let's start moving through the app and changing this stuff, changing it over to use recoil. So the first thing we're gonna do here is get rid of this import app provider because we don't need it anymore. We're gonna change this to recoil root. Oops, gotta do that for both of them here. Um, we also need to import. I'm gonna do a lot of copying and pasting because we gotta get through this quickly. And that's it for the app page. We're just swapping that, uh, that app provider out with recoil root. Next is we need to, on this uh, frame page, we need to get uh, access to this uh, theme, right? Well, we've already done that in our use effect. So great, what we can do here is we can import that, uh, that hook. And since it returns the theme that we've already used from the atom, we can basically just say, theme here, and then we can, um, we can use theme initializer, okay? So we use theme, theme initializer, which inside of it is actually importing that atom and, and using its value, and then we're just returning it so we can use it here. Because you, when you're using a hook like this, you can just assume that everything going on in that hook is actually going here on, uh, on this page too. Uh, next, what we need to do is we need to walk through the application and go find all of the other pages that are using um, a context. And basically, we need to rip out this and this, all right? And um, we need to use it here. Nice, all right. Um, one thing we'll have to change is Somewhere we're gonna have context dot. We need to get rid of those because it's no longer context dot. We're just referring to it as theme and change theme, okay? So again, use recoil state is just like use state. Very simple, all right? Next, we're gonna go over to the menu.js. And on the menu page, it's very, very similar to what we just did. Um, actually, it's exactly the same as what we just did. We are using use recoil state because we want to not only use the state, but we also want to be able to change it. Now on the next file, that's not going to be the same case. Replace the context dots with nothing, get rid of it. So now we have access to nav open and we have access to toggle side nav down here to be able to change the atom state. Now on side nav, um, we don't actually do any changing of the state. We only do reading of the state. So we're gonna use a different use recoil uh, hook. We're gonna use use recoil value, okay? And for this one, we don't need to deconstruct both a variable and 
uh, a method to, uh, to change it, we only need to create a nav open value, right? Use recoil value only returns one value, not a, a tuple. So we can get rid of context dot. All right. So now we've changed our app, frame, foot, menu, and side nav. Um, let's go look at one other thing. In our app atoms, we also created a selector. Now a selector is very similar to an atom, except that you can kind of use a combination of different atoms to create a final output value. So think of it like a, like a combo value. Um, so I could, I could like have this over here and uh, have a different atom uh, right here, right? Uh, or I could do some type of calculation uh, on if, if this value was a number, maybe I wanna do some type of a, get a square root of it or something, who knows, whatever. Um, so this kind of allows you to create like a composite value out of the atoms and other selectors that you have. And then whenever one of those things changes, the whole selector changes. Now, so what we've done is over on our, our um, about us page, let's go look at that real quick. We have this text. This is a very contrived way of using recoil, but you know, hey, let's, let's, let's roll with it. Um, the theme is light or dark, right? And when we switch the theme, it kind of changes. Uh, okay, so we'd like to use our selector here. So we need to go and actually import um, our selector from our app atoms, and we're gonna use use recoil value because we're only gonna be reading it. Um, and then we just basically need to use recoil value. We'll just put that right here. And then down here, all we need to do is change this to theme text. And we're done. So now we are using the selector there. Now all that logic for that is being taken care of at the selector level. All right, let's go take a look at our application and make sure that everything is still running. I have a feeling we messed something up, so we'll check. What do we got? Use recoil state is not defined. Okay, in our foot. So, yep, we forgot to bring that in. I'll do that real quick. All right, so now our theme works, our side nav works, and our about page, oh, we got an issue there too. Let's go check it out. Um, what's the issue? Context is not defined, so we still have um, context. Uh, let's do edit, find in files, context dot, dot context frame. Here we go. We forgot to change it on the frame. go all right so here's our about us page and as we switch it back and forth that selector is changing in that value it's 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 kind of creating a, a composite value of both the text and the uh, atom together and kind of every time the atom changes the the output of that selector changes again the the selectors can be way more advanced than that I'm just uh, trying to create a very simple way of showing you how it works so that's that's it. Um, we have converted our very simple app that uses some global state over to using recoil. So now we've got our feet wet with recoil. What we want to do now is um, we want to, I want to show you a different part of this application where we've gone a little bit further and use something called Atom Family. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and have to discard some of these changes, all of them really. That's going to take a moment. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you, so I have a new application which I've turned, I've taken the uh, client portion of this application and moved it into its own folder um, called client. And then I also have a server which we create a GraphQL API. We retrieve some information from a database that, um, we retrieve some information from a database that are hotels. So we get a list of hotels basically and we, we spit them out onto a page and then we add a star next to them to allow you to favorite them. When you favorite them, you create um, 
an atom dynamically on the fly, which is this is something that you can't do with context API. It's something you can't do with uh, Redux and uh, with MobX. I'm sure you can do it, but it's probably a lot more advanced um, or it's, it's a lot more complicated to do it. So here is now our, uh, our new setup here. So we have a, I'm gonna go ahead and run npm install on this and get that running. And I'll kind of show you what we've done here. So we have our client app just as before, um, and we have this server. So what our server is doing is it's uh, connecting to a Couchbase database, and then we are creating a, a GraphQL API using Express GraphQL. We are getting a list of hotels uh, from Malibu, California, because I didn't want that many of them. I only wanted like 10 of them, so Malibu only had 10 in the database. Yeah, so I used it. And then uh, instead of returning, so in, in our database, um, if you look at an individual hotel, it's got a lot of information. Um, we don't want all that in our application, so that's why we've used GraphQL, and basically we are just um, providing a few of those fields uh, to the GraphQL API, and then in our client application, we have um, a, an Apollo provider that we're using, and we have added a hotels.js page. So let's take a look at this real quick. Um, in our hotels.js, basically we, we call that GraphQL API. We have a list of hotels that's gonna show on the left-hand side of the page. We're using Flexbox here to kind of split up the page. And on the right-hand side, we're using a favorites list. Now this, favorites, this favorite list is where when we, when we favorite a particular hotel, that's gonna get added uh, to an atom uh, dynamically, and then we're going to render out a list of favorites components that each depend on one of those atoms. Now, um, the interesting thing is when we start to get into our hotel list page, so let's go take a look at that, and this is where we kind of need to uh, take a look at what's going on here. So we're mapping over the full list of hotels. Let's go ahead and start this application. And I'll continue going over the code because we're running out of time. But um, hotel list is basically a list of hotels. And when you click on one of the icons, when you click on one of the icons, what you're doing is first you're saying, hey, let's check to make sure that the, uh, the ID for this hotel does not uh, exist in a list called favorite IDs. Um, and if so, we're then going to insert a favorite. Now this is where we start to get into a little bit more advanced uh, recoil, intermediate recoil. So when we call insert favorite, what we're doing here is we are passing name, vacancy, and ID. The signature is important because um, we are using use recoil callback. Now use re recoil callback is similar to use callback. It provides an API to work with, update recoil state, and it also has async capabilities. Um, it, you also have other parts of the API like snapshot, go to snapshot and reset. We're not using those. We're just using set right now and we're gonna see that up here. So what you do uh, in use recoil callback is you pass in a function, which is that this big long name, add ID to list and create favorite because that's exactly what it does. I wanted to be very descriptive with it. But you can also pass in a list of dependencies over here, which we are not doing right now, but just know that that's possible, just like you can do with use, call, use callback. Um, so we pass add ID to list and create favorites function. Um, oops, that's not supposed to be there. Uh, to the callback function. And then inside of that function, we then see um, that we are returning a function with the same signature as uh, we passed in down here, right? Name, vacancy, and ID. These are, the, these are the fields from each of the hotels that we want to record and kind of uh, be part of our favorite, each of our favorites. Now, what this is doing is very interesting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk away from this for just a moment. I'm going to show you favorite list, okay? So this is the favorites list component. And what we're doing here is we're creating an atom called favorite list IDs. The only purpose for this atom is to keep track of the individual IDs of the different hotels. It, it's a list of IDs. That's it. Okay. 
um, what we're doing then is we're, we're creating a list of favorite components and we're mapping over that list of IDs and we're basically passing an ID into each favorite, okay? Now let's go take a look at the actual favorite component and what it's doing. So when we, when we basically create one, uh, add one of these components on the fly to our list, what we're doing is we're passing in an ID you know, we're setting uh, uh, the key and the ID for this guy, uh, for this list. Um, but what's more important is we're using this use recoil state. All right, so let's, let's back up for a second and look at this. Instead of creating an atom, we're creating an atom family, okay? So for each uh, item in the atom family, we have name, vacancy, and booked, okay? So when we get our ID, we are, uh, we are creating basically uh, a new favorite component. And when you click on that, on that favorite, you are, you are then changing the booked value, right? So in order to do that, you need to uh, set the individual favorite and, um, and be able to pass in the new values, okay? And when we're using the recoil state, we are actually creating a new favorite by ID. So we're using the ID that was passed in. And the, the best way to think of this now, okay, let's kind of back up one more time over to hotel list. The best way to think of this now is when we create a new favorite, the first thing we need to do is we need to add the ID to the current list of favorite IDs. And that's, that's over here, okay? That's one atom. And then we need to create another atom by ID with the same ID and link it to one of the items in that list. And there we're gonna store the name, vacancy, and the booked value for it, okay? So this is, to do this with Context API, you simply can't do it. Um, it's, it, if you were to try to do this, you would have to write your own library, just like Recoil.js has, and you would have to um, use the internals of Context API, not their actual exposed API. And then you would, and what they're doing, because uh, I actually talked to Dave from the Recoil.js team, is that, that what, what they're doing is they're using like internal mechanisms of Context API, and they're, uh, th whenever, whenever you create this list, this Atom family, um, they are basically forcing a re-render whenever you change any value of it. That's, I, I don't wanna go too far into it because it, I probably won't be able to explain it that well. And I'm hoping that I can get him to write a blog post on it because I think it would be really great if we, if we had a little bit more information about what they're doing. But um, understand that they are using Context API under the hood, but they're not using the exposed API. That's, the, that's what you need to know. So we go back and we look at our application here. And what we're able to do is when we go to this hotels list, right? We've got our list of hotels. When we favorite one, they pop up over here on the right hand side and anyone that has a vacancy, I can then book it. And if we go ahead and pull up our dev tools for a moment, you will notice, I'm gonna make this very small here, that when I change one of these values, it's only updating the individual atom that's why you use recoil for this type of functionality. Now I've got a minute left and I'm gonna try and show you one other demo. And this is inside the readme in the GitHub repo for the resources that I gave you on that slide earlier. And I'll go back to the slide one more time. But this is, let's refresh this page here. Uh, Jacques Blom created this. Um, and this is uh, the same concept on steroids, basically. Um, you can add these individual items to the page, right? And notice we also have uh, the, the re-rendering lines showing. And if I change this, it only updates the one item, right? So you could have uh, hundreds of these things on the page. And when you change one of them, let's see where are they at here. There they are. When you change one of them, it only re-renders the one individual item. Again, you can't do this with Context API. This is why you use Recoil. Um, with that being said, um, that's all I have to show for now. Um, if you would like to go and check out um, the resources, here it is. Uh, 
bit.ly slash react recoil. Again, my name is Eric Bouchard. Uh, thank you for joining us today. This is great. This is my second time talking at react live. Uh, I love it. Um, yeah, great. That's it. So thank you. <laughs>